Hello YouTube, I'm back. Uh, I'm still working on putting together demo videos and instructional videos for my friend Dante to learn coding and advance into using Pygame to make small video games. Um, so today I want to touch on some basic Python fundamentals. The big one, the big one today is going to be about variables and uh, interacting with variables. We're going to, we're not going to touch into a GUI. We're going to be working strictly with a command line uh, application setup. So previously, we had done a uh, Hello Pi to make sure Python was working, and we did a Pi game test to make sure Pi game was working. So now I want to talk about um, strings integer variables, floating point variables, and boolean variables. So first, Python is an implicit language. It, it will assume the type of variable you're trying to create based on the data you're trying to put into the variable. So we're going to make a string variable called authors or author. And we're going to put in the author name. I'm going to make an integer variable called version. I'm going to make a floating point variable called pi. And I'm going to make a Boolean variable, which is a true false variable of print info. And it's going to be true. Now, each of these has a different characteristic about it. Um, a string variable leverages a string of text. Um, a version or the version variable is an integer leverage is a round solid integer number um, the pi variable is a floating point number because we have a decimal point and then we have a boolean variable which can be either true or false really quick I'm gonna print type for each of these so that we can actually see the associated type in Python or the output from Python through each of these. Okay. You have string for author, int for version, float for pi, and bool for print info. Now, all these are are names over memory that allow for storage of information that we can easily access without having to know the specific memory address where this data is being held. Reasons you might want to have static hard-coded variables like this is being able to call them in multiple places without having to change them in every place. So anywhere you would have to put the same number twice like a gravity of a planet or something would be a place where you could use that variable instead and then you only have to change that variable in one place later on um, variables are also good for when you're collecting data from a user so for example if i wanted to get my username i could do this then we would print uh, username here just so you can see that we're going to run it again and there you go so it can take in my input and it can it can work with it now one other thing that we could do and this is another fun item is we can convert this to lowercase so that I can match it to something later on with an expected case. You notice all the all the letters are now lowercase in the in the output because I put it in like this, but it converts it to lower and then uses it here. That means I could also put the author here like this. I'm just going to show you this real quick. And you'll notice that the lower is only applied to the input as it's going into the username, so it doesn't affect anything down here. You can also take this same lower, and you can 
put it down here attached to one of the strings and this will change how the behavior works. So now you see the author has been lowercase, but it's it's lowercase down here in the use, not in the input. So if I put author again, the second one is going to be with the capitalization. <clears throat> so you can see that I can I can apply it either at the time that I'm putting it into the variable, or I can apply it out here. Now I could also do this to upper. And that'll that'll give us uppercase and lowercase. So you can see we can work with that data in various ways. <clears throat> so that gives you a kind of an idea of working with strings. Um, you can do items with variables like this. And that's going to do math. Because version is 1 plus 2, that's 3, it gives us an output of 3. We could also take version plus pi, and this is an interesting one because you can technically do this with a floating floating points and integers. You cannot put them together with a string. So if I put author plus version plus pi, we're going to get a type error because it can't put them together. But what I could do is cast this to string, cast this to string, and we're going to get a completely different result because we're no longer working with numbers. It's no longer a matter of adding numbers together. It is concatenating the string together. So now you have the author, the version number, and then pi. <clears throat> now, what we could also do here, I'm going to take these string options out. I'm going to cast author to an integer. And this will be interesting. Because it can't convert to base 10 those characters. Now, technically speaking, characters themselves, like lowercase a, for example, it's still too much for it to change it to a. But if it take it to 1, we can obviously cast that, because that's still a number. Now, in some programming languages, if you cast a single character, um, you might end up with a number. So this is important to know if you cast like a letter uh, in other languages, you might end up with a number as well because it'll reference the character map number. And that would be like alt 0128 or alt 0145 or Like you can, all of these are numbers off of a character map that I'm referencing. <laughs> so each character could have a have a numeric value that could accidentally be cast over if you're not careful with it. The next item I want to bring up is that we can use um, con conditional evaluation. Kind of like how we did for print info, where it's like, okay, if version is uh, greater than or equal to 2, that's going to be false. Well, we could do the same thing with if version is greater than or equal to 2. And then, it, as you can see, it opens up this line with an indent. And this is part of the white spacing in Python. It's, it's opening up that line. So what we're going to do, if version is greater than or equal to 2, is we're going to print uh, version is 
Well, actually, we're just, let's let's just do greater than two. Greater than two. And I did not mean to open this up. That's sorry about that. Uh, hotkeyed it. Version is less than two. We're gonna print that it is less than two. And then we can assume otherwise that version is two. Right? So let's run that. Version is less than two because version is one. Now, the interesting thing here is that if version was greater than or equal to two, then print info would be true. What we're gonna do is put print info in there as well. This will give us a space and then uh, the print info value. So you can see version is less than two, false, because version is not greater than or equal to two. If I bring this up to two, suddenly it's true. And then if I, if you go version is two, it's true. But let's say I take it to three. Now it's true, but it's also greater than two because this is evaluating to true as well. But what this does for me is I can also set this to if the print info is true, ta -da. it's greater than two. If I put this to two, version is two, and it's now a false print info. And if I put this to one, it is now less than two, and it's still a false print info. But this gives you the ability to replace the evaluation in an if statement with the Boolean variable itself. So you can either do the evaluation, and this is an else if, and then else, which is, if these two are not true, then print this, if this is true, print print this. Else, if in other words, if this is not true, then evaluate if this is true. And if it is, print this. And then here it's like for all else, for all other answers, print this. So that is how Booleans can help you control the flow of information in your application. But it gets a little more complicated than that. So next, we're gonna make loop equal true. And then we're going to make a while loop. While loop. It's a it's a cute little pun because technically you, you don't actually put this like this. Like this is the variable loop. So my while loop is using the variable loop to decide whether or not it should continue to run. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take user input. And if user input string of information we're asking for input here and then what I want to do is if user input is equal to the word quit now what we're going to do then is tell it loop is now equal to false and that will let us exit the loop And we're going to put the word quit exactly how we have it in the uh, if statement. Now, that also means, though, that if we do this again and I just type quit, I'm just going to sit here and type it over and over again. This is not accurate for the if statement because it is comparing the values of the letters. But what we could do is, like we did earlier, lower to take it to lowercase, or we could take it to uppercase if we needed to. And we'll do this lower here. We could do
do it here, or we can do it down, down here like this. Um, if you do it in the if statement, then you'll remember to do it on both sides. Uh, if you, you could just put this like that and have it lowercase already. But if you do it on both sides, then you know for a fact it's going to come out the way you're intending for it to come out. So if I type lowercase quit, it now works. Um, I could put in uh, an L, L if user input lower, oops, I mean to capitalize that, is equal to version dot lower. And oh, I'm missing the colon. There we go. We're going to print author. And dash version plus. We're going to cast it to a string version info. Else, print, sorry, I didn't understand. And that gives us the capability to control the flow of a program. So that's the basics of variables, the if statement, and the while loop. Um, I think next time we will touch into lists and uh, the for loop, which is really good for navigating through the list. And I feel like they go hand in hand. Um, these variables go hand in hand with the if statements and the loop because these are usually what get evaluated. Strings get evaluated, numbers get evaluated, booleans get evaluated. Um, when you get into lists and such, you'll have to evaluate each item in a list, and that's where the for loop really shines. So we'll touch on that next time, and I think that will do it for now. Have a great one.